Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Um, typically, we do these talks on Friday nights, but we're doing a Friday afternoon where we are. It's Friday afternoon where our special guest, Martin Creed, is. It's Friday night. Um, but before I introduce Martin, I would like to thank those that make our Friday programs possible. Our presenting sponsor, Bank of America, and support from the Corcoran Group and Sandy and Stephen Pearlbinder. Thank you. And to our viewers, we'll have time for Q&A. So please put your questions in the Q&A section of the Zoom. So as opposed to the chat, there's the other toggle for, for Q&A. Um, and we have the great pleasure of hearing from artist, musician, performer, I think I'll also add composer and choreographer, Martin Creed, who joins us from home in London. Uh, Martin's piece, work number 2210, Everything is Going to Be All Right, which was first exhibited in 2015, is now on the facade of the parish. It is one of several large-scale text-based neon sculptures that Martin has made during his career, which perhaps most notably took off in 2001 when he won the Turner Prize for work number 227, The Lights Going On and Off. Hi, Martin. Welcome. It's so nice to see you again. Hi. Good, you're on? Okay, great. Hi. Woo! Woo! Um, I feel like I know that you kind of famously hate beginnings and endings of Hi. things. Hi. Yeah, I like having a fade in. I mean, if it's a song, or a, you know, a fade in and a fade out. Because nothing is definite. Or rather, the anything that's definite, I feel, is very, you know, brutal. Because the world is not definite. It's, you know, certainly doesn't feel like that to me. So anything that is definite often seems really brutal. Like a country border or a haircut. You know, it's very like, oh my God, what the hell? That's not human. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the haircut. <laughs> on the country border as well. True. So um, you're at home, you're, you're, you're in your studio. What is the space? What is your space here? Hi, it's my, it, it's where I live. That's fine. I don't know if I'd call it a home. <laughs> but I live here and this is where I work as well. I've never, I've, I could say that I don't think I really believe in having a studio that's separate from where I live. Because I've always felt I tried to, I did try to do that once. Because I thought I should try and have a studio, you know, to, to try and be a professional, you know. And then, but I think a studio, you need, you need to have somewhere to sleep in a studio. You need to have a kitchen, you need to have a bathroom, and you need to have a living room. So it seems like you may as well combine that with where you live. But well, I'm lucky enough, you know, obviously, or maybe not obviously, because it looks <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> I do have a bathroom. <laughs> and a bed somewhere, I hope. It's lucky in this world, but, uh, and I've got a bed, I, so, and I live in this swamp, I'm quite a messy, I would say that I'm quite a messy person, mm. uh, the way I work, probably, I don't know, I mean, I don't know what it looks like, I don't know if it looks messy, but it seems quite messy to me. Well, it looks like a space where you're making and doing things. I, I and well, uh, the idea that your art and your life would be separated would kind of be contradictory to the way I think of you as an artist. You, I, I think of you as a very socially centered artist, that, that, that being in the center of people is, is pretty much important to the work. I mean, it's everything in many ways. Um, and I think that, that that has something to do with the work that, that we have up now, which is just really turning on officially today. 
Um, maybe we can just start this by speaking about that work a little bit and um, where it comes from. Okay. So this is now on the facade of the parish when you drive by um, as, you're, as you're moving up and down, or I should say back and forth, east and west on Route 27. You'll see this um, day and night, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, this is, as I said, work number 2,210. Everything is going to be all right um, from 2015. Do you want to talk a little bit about how this piece come, came into being, the origins? Two things I'll try. I suppose I feel like it's good to say that uh, I feel like you know, in talking about things, often you know, talking about things is different from doing things. And um, I feel like it's almost, uh, you know, it, it, it can be dangerous, I think, to uh, think that you can, you know, um, talk about things, but I quite like talking about things. So, because <laughs> I think it can help a bit, you know. But um, this came about, uh, it was the first, uh, I've made a few works which say everything is going to be all right. Uh, yeah, the first one was in 2000, what was it, 1999? Uh, and then it was the first time I'd ever been asked to do a public work, mm. a work that was not in a private, that was that was viewed, that was that you could view on the street, you know, not in a private art gallery, not in a place where people would necessarily choose to see it. That, I was really aware of that. I was really aware that people would be walking past or driving past, you know, and they would not be choosing to see this thing that I was putting in front of them. And, uh, and that felt to me, uh, I, I, well, I, you know, it's just like the audience, the people were, you know, well, if you, to put it another way, if people go to an art gallery, you know, they're asking for it. But if they are just walking past in the street, you know, they're just innocent passers-by, you know. So... I, I was thinking it's it's different because it's like busking or something like that. It's like shouting, you know, in the street. And uh, so I don't know. I wanted. I just wanted to do something nice, really. Mm. I, I was I was really depressed at the time. I think I could say that. So I was very. I was definitely my general mood most of the time was very low and depressed and I just uh, I just split up with someone that we'd been together and and then and, um, and I was like I want to do I've got to do I'm doing this public you know uh, for want of a better word just nice to people you know which obviously includes myself mm. And uh, I, I tried different things out, but in the end, this everything is going to be all right. I thought it was because um, uh, uh, people, you know, people have said that to me in my life, and um, you know, it's um, I've always it's always, it's nice when someone gives you a hug or says everything's going to be all right or something like that. You know, it's something I don't know. I think sometimes when you're working, when I'm working on things, I think there's a tendency, and I feel it now as I'm talking to you as well. This is the trouble with talking about things. You know, I feel like I've got to be smart. In fact, I do feel like I have to be smart. So, <laughs> no. Well, so do I, so we can share that. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, so, and the thing about this, everything is, good. The, the thing about this, um, I think the best way to work is to, you need to not try and be smart, you know. You need to try and be uh, plain and simple, you know. Kind of smart ass work, don't really like it. And I think this everything is going to be all right. It's like, yeah, you know, it's not clever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, um, but I find it comforting. I find it comforting when people say that. I suppose all cliches are a bit like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, 
but I don't know, you know, so it's not, it's, I don't know really. Uh, up until I made this, I'd been making maybe work that wasn't, this was a departure, I suppose, when I did this, uh, the departure from things I've been working on. That had been more, I don't know what you'd call it, it was a bit more minimalistic or uh, these things, uh, like, you know, kind of um, geometric and yeah of the words yeah or maybe um we can go to some images of, of what martin's referring to which are i mean we could show the pyramid painting um something like this yeah which was much earlier it's only 904 and there's there's even um an earlier piece the the, the crumpled up piece of paper which i think yeah, work 88, a very good work. But I, I think the notion that, that you're, you're bringing up, this idea of being plain and simple, um, well, it's, it's true. I think the work is, um, it can be very straightforward in, it, in, in its way, but it's, um, and, and I always think of, of how you approach things as this kind of either or, and even, even with this piece that everything is going to be all right. I mean, it implies, that it'll be all right, right? Like <laughs> that it's um it's going to be okay, but also it'll maybe be just okay. And there's there's a there's an ambiguity there that is that is interesting, and it's wrapped in the rainbow hue of of the of the neon. Um, it's it's an interesting uh, way of being, let's say, plain and simple, because it it never is, right? And um maybe it, it's um helpful in some way to think about uh, and even the, the Turner Prize work, the lights going off and on, which in and of itself is, is deceptively very simple, right? That you have, you're kind of making a sculpture of the space, which is either illuminated or not illuminated. <laughs> um, or, you know, there's, um, the, there's other neon pieces. I'm even thinking of the one, um, don't worry. Or mothers. This is. I mean, these are. Talk about like how did how how you got from one place to the next. I mean, this is a kind of different. This is a different gesture. You know, the mothers thing. Yeah. The mothers thing was um because uh, I get into that because I've been doing a lot of these neon signs, and whenever I whenever I've made these neon works, I've often thought, why. I mean, I'm writing these words, you know, why should they be big? Why don't you just write them in a bit of paper? You know, often, and then it's like, so why, you know, why this size or this size or this size or this size? You know, I was thinking about that because the size of things, um, you know, I, I mean, I've always thought that small things are just as important as big things, you know, so it's not to do with importance, but, um, you know, when you're working on something, uh, oh, it's funny because my my teacher at art school, uh, he always is called Bruce McLean, he's an artist, and uh, he always said, "Make it bigger," <laughs> and he always said he said that to everyone. <laughs> and, uh, when was know, that? Like, was that in the the late eighties, early nineties? When was that? It's, but make it bigger. It's good advice, uh, especially because if you think about it, if you don't, not necessarily to make it physically bigger, but um, to whatever you're doing, you know, to just exaggerate and amplify as much as possible as a general, you know, so whatever it is, try and just do it more, you know. But the thing with the, 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 with the neon works, I was always worried. I was always thinking, well, why, you know, some of the, because the reasoning, like why should it be like this or like this? I mean, it doesn't really, you know. So I was thinking, well, why should these words be bigger or smaller? And, I, and it was the mother's work came about through a sort of experiment in trying to um, figure out size to write words mm -hmm. physically. And I, so I was looking for. Uh, well, I, I got to thinking about mothers because I was thinking about how a mother 
in order to be a mother, you need to have a baby, and the baby has to be the mother has to be bigger than the baby, you know, in order to be able to carry the baby around, you know. So it's a kind of a stupid thing, but uh, and I was thinking, yeah, so mothers got to be big, you've got to be big, you know. So I just did this word mothers as big as possible within this room. This is the room that it was first exhibited in, and that, it was basically made as big as it could possibly be in that room. Um, and uh, I was thinking, well, and then I got to, you know, the, the other thing about words, writing words, is that it always has bothered me, is that, you know, writing from left to right or right to left, as they do, like, the thing is the type, kind of words are directional, you know, and so that, then I had the idea I could make it spin round. And um, and then it all seemed like it was really dangerous, you know, this spinning. Yeah, how far above people's heads is the base here? It doesn't look very far. Oh, it's really, I don't know how we got it past health and safety. Because <laughs> that is only, it's, it's lower than a door. Frame. It's about um. It's it's about seven. Wow. The really tall people had to really. It felt like it was going to hit you. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so I, and I was like this because um, you know, I think of it as a monument to mothers. You know, but I also think of I also I've got this memory of being of lying back in a pram and kind of like and so and I don't know if it was my mother but someone you know kind of reaching in and then ah you know right or the that your parents are always giants you know the, the adults are always giants when you're little and then you grow up and you're the giant oh you know, I mean a powerful fear so you know like your whole world, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But um, I. So anyway, that's the so so like a lot of these works come about like that. They're not really like like it, the way I described that. That it's a kind of little experiment and like make it a bit bigger or make it smaller or make it you know it's you know that, that kind of thing. You know, the, the lights going on and off came about as a like a sort of experiment, like trying to make something with um, trying to make a sculpture that was sort of like a piece of music in the sense that it would, uh, you know, fill the room. It doesn't matter where you look, you know, yeah. but that uh, where you look when you look at that, you know. I always think it's a because I, I always think it's you know, if someone says to you, hey, you know, look at this, you know, it's like you have to. It's like a control, sort of a controlling thing, you know. And like a lot of, I feel like a lot of visual works are like that. They, they're like sort of like demanding to be looked at, so they kind of want to have control over you to some extent, you know. And this, well, that's the thing. It doesn't matter. There's not that thing of like look here because it doesn't matter where you look, you know. But right. something. There's something that I like about art galleries in general that you can freely, that the audience, the people are freely moving. You know, you're not trapped in a seat like in a theatre. You know, you can you can walk around, have a laugh with your friends, you know, talk to people while you're... It's not, you know, generally, I know that there might be exceptions, but you can talk with your people you're with and, you know, and have a laugh and look at the work yeah this piece is great because it it just it it you i like the, the analogy to music is is important because it just it fills the entire space but it also just kind of washes over you and it's um i mean i don't know how early on or if always you were making music or playing music but did it did that part of your practice come was that always something that you were engaged with, or has that come in the years since? I, uh, I, I grew up getting taught, I grew up totally with music, like from, you know, age, 
ukulele and violin and all this kind of thing. My mum and dad were very, you know, they, they, my mum and dad basically were just, you know, they just said that music and art, visual art, what gets called art, I don't, I don't like using the word art, but any, uh, but you know, what the, the field that's known as art and music, the field that's known as music, but that they were the most important things you could do. You know, they, they were idealized in my house. So yeah, music and art, what gets called art, but um were they artists? I don't like using the word art because it seems to sort of because well for a start I don't really really understand what it means exactly, you know. Because if it's to do with creativity, people, everyone's creative all the time. There's no, so what's art? What, what is like, you know, just a kind of word for some sort of stuff. Quite, you know, it's not a very, I don't think it's necessarily a very helpful word in mm. the sense that, you know, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I certainly don't find it that helpful to think I'm working on art, you know, because I don't know what that is. If I think I'm working on this thing that's going to be displayed on a building, or I'm working on a on a on a piece of music that's going to take three minutes of time, or a painting that's you know just to make it more of a concrete thing. But everything that you're doing, like I, I think the 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 thing about you and a lot of artists, but I were is that you, you, everything you're doing is sort of part of your making and part of your art making. So even you know in recent years you've been making clothes. Your clothes now have work numbers. Maybe we should talk about that for just a second, so people have a grounding in that. So every piece that you make is numbered. Ah, yeah, it's numbered and it's. Do that's just because when I was at art school, I just was like, oh, I don't want to have titles, you know. You know, titles seemed quite pretentious to me because it's like, you know, I mean, it depends on the title, you know. But anyway, I, I didn't want to have titles, but I didn't want to say untitled. I thought that, was, I mean, I mean, I don't mind that, but I didn't want to put that because so I just so so so. I took the, I, I mean, it's like a library system, but I, I took it from music. I took it from what I knew about, you know, Beethoven and Mozart, and they, how all their works were numbered. And so I thought, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll just do that. And then I can give everything a number. And, um, but uh, it makes making your catalog raisonne very easy for, the, for, for your future catalogers. <laughs> I, I well, that's the thing. It might seem it might seem like it makes things easier, but in fact, you know, no one ever remembers the numbers, including me. And they're really you know, and you get and they get mixed up. So, you, so you end up with things wrongly numbered, and <laughs> it's, not, it's not that um, organ. It's not that really. It's certainly not very efficient. <laughs> but you've tried. You've tried. But the the um the numbering and the composition. I mean, that's something that I. I mean, I came to being involved with. Well, I went to art school and then ended up here. But also through through music, through learning music, playing music. I grew up with piano and classical composition and all that stuff. Um, and it's always been somehow in my mind like a much um freer or easy not easier but like a more abstract way of like tapping into something um but even but you're and so I guess do you find yourself more drawn to one type of making over another is it dependent on the day is it dependent on like what what's pulling you is it is it ideas based or is it just like a feeling in the moment it's definitely to do with feelings you know Often it's to do with reacting against something I've just been doing. So I want to, like, I might I often get very, dis, you know, I get disgusted by my own work and by my own, by my, my stuff, my, my stuff, you know, and my, what I do, my, I get, 
So I, I think, oh no, I need to go and do something else. You know, and this is like, I'm like, I get stuck in the mud. You know, if I do something too much, so then might try and offset it by doing something else, you know. Mm. Um, I think it's something like that. Yeah. Just thinking about something when you were talking, I can't, I can't remember what it was, but. Well, it's like a way to jolt yourself out of one one thing into the next. I mean, you know, the process of making wherever you're making it, like what the 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 being in the studio thing, since you don't, you know, you're in the house, not like it's all part of one world for you. So you have to kind of keep it moving. And I guess that's how you do it. You choose one expression over the other. Um. I mean, I, do, I, 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 I mean, I don't, and I don't even, I mean, yeah, it's all such a mystery, you know, <laughs> but there's still, a, you know, I'm just desperately trying to live my life. I mean, desperately, I'm lucky because I, I, you know, I've, I, I've got, I've got time to, you know, indulge some of my little fantasies, you know. I remember this joke. I remember this thing. <laughs> I remember this. This I, I I love this guy. He's a comedian. He's called Gerard Hoffman. Mm -hmm. oh, he's like from the 1950s in England. He's an artist and musician. Mm -hmm. And he said this thing I always remember. Uh, he said, "My artist friends, they think I'm a really good musician." <laughs> My musician friends, they think I'm a really good artist. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes talk about that and I talk to my friends. <laughs> I don't know if that means you're really good at both or really good at neither. <laughs> but I'm, I'm actually, but talking about that, I'm a, I really believe in them doing things that you're not an expert in. And that's another reason to change what you're, you know, that's another reason to change, you know, it's like if I play guitar, I feel like, um, you know, if you get good at playing certain chords on the guitar, you know, you might be inclined then to play those chords more than any other chords because they are the ones that you know how to play and they feel good. You know, I think there's always this, I feel like there's always this thing, you know, anything, it's like, I feel like there's always, I think it's very human to always sort of try and take the route of least resistance, you know. So, so if you do hard work and set up something that kind of makes you feel good, because maybe you make something or you can play guitar, play certain chords or whatever, you know, there's, there's always going to be a tendency to stick with that because you know that it's good, you know. Rather than and and um, and I feel like that's always the route that leads to death because that's then when nothing changes then because you just stick with the fixed thing you know I feel like it's a terrible thing about life that you know it's like because any time you get to some safety or certainty you know every any time you reach sort of certainty if you try and hold on to it you're fucking dead you know. So it's only, you know, and it's, and it's a terrible thing, that. I can never get over that. Mm. Because that's the point, you know? <laughs> well, it's, it's interesting you bring that up because we just, of course, the whole world just went through something that we've never experienced before. I mean, not in, not in our lifetimes, you know, this, the entire world went through the same thing, trauma, yeah. tragedy, experience experience, boredom, isolation, whatever you want to call it. So Aye. I guess now we all have to do something different. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm look I've been out about I even traveled the other day. I traveled to Denmark for a gig for two nights. And um, when I came back I had to do you know a quarantine at home here. Mm-hmm. 
good days until I could get a test to re- to be released. Yeah. To the community. <laughs> yeah. And yesterday I was released. I bet that felt good. I and it's nice, uh, and I don't know, but I hate the lockdown. I, I hate. I mean, there's nothing. Question. There's nothing to love. I quite liked it. <laughs> Well, I think some artists really did, but there's, there's also, you know, your practice to me is also so much about other people and you've worked with so many different kinds of like troops or ensembles with, you've choreographed for dancers, for um, orchestra, you've composed for orchestra. Um, and then more recently you kind of, you know, you worked with performers to kind of enact enact your show in many ways to the even to the extent of putting the work up and down during the during the opening um i think we have some images of of some recent things and and you're also making clothing when the painting got put up and then it got taken down 20 minutes later yeah, <laughs> yeah. That. that's my favorite um did that happen only for the opening or did that happen throughout the day when the show was open it happened throughout the whole exhibition. Mm. It was brilliant. I love that. Mm. It's for some, I don't really know why, but um, it's just that thing. I often think with them, um, you know, it's the walking on and the walking off. You know, it's like the, you know, that's just the brilliant, I don't know. It's like the, you know, I often think about that when, you know, if you, if you often, you know, sometimes, um, I don't really know what the function of thing, but I'm thinking of like, the, I feel like the best moments in life are usually very, um, you know, fleeting. And uh, when I think of the best moments, it's like, you know, having a laugh, just laughing and laughing and laughing with some people I love, you know, or in the kitchen or in the, at the bus stop or, you know, or something like that, or, or some weird thing I saw out of, the, out of the window of a train or an amazing, you know, bit of sunlight coming through something or other on, you know, when you're looking at your car or something weird, you know, something, and then, and those are the best moments, especially having a laugh with your friends, you know. Mm-hmm. And if only it was possible to make a work, you know, that was like that, you know. I often think about that. And I think that's why I work on a lot of these things that are kind of live events because of the, basically what, I, what I'm thinking of is that, you know, it's like if you're, it's like, it's like, for example, I went to Paris to see the Mona Lisa, you know. But I barely remember you know, the painting itself. But I do remember queuing up to see the painting, you know, and I remember the floor, the floor was kind of shiny, it was kind of slippery. And then, and then I remember, you know, being on the metro, the underground, the, the subway in Paris, you know, and then, and so I remember these things, you know, it's like, you know, and it's like the, the but the painting, Going to see the painting was the excuse to do those other things. Right. You know? Yeah. I often and I often think that about clothes. That, that's what and because I've been working a lot on clothes lately, you know, maybe especially during the lockdown, because all I've been doing is going to the supermarket once a week, you know. It's like so I feel like it's my one chance to, you know, get dressed, you know. <laughs> it's all I've all I've got left, you know. <laughs> So are you getting really decked out to go to go to your grocery? Absolutely. And then um, nice. But that and that's the thing. And often, but it's got me really to think about that because sometimes when I if I've got a meeting, but this is and now I'm thinking back to before the lockdown. So not but like often there might be a meeting I have to go to. And it might be to do, you know, with a let's say a public sculpture or something like that, you know, but I might be really excited about that meeting, not because of the meeting or the work, but because I get to wear my clothes, <laughs> you know, that I've been working on, you 
I love that. Wear some stupid clothes, you know. And it's like, so you, so I, if I think about that, I think, well, what is it? What is it? I really want. Do I want to do that work, or do, or do, is it just that I want to wear the clothes? And the work's excuse <laughs> for the thing you really want to do. And and that's what I think about, like going to an art gallery. It's, it's like you might look at these paintings, but what you what what might be really enjoyable is more like having the time with your friends and that, you know. Mm. So. And the thing about that, I feel like then if you're making something to put in that art gallery, I feel like it's good to remember that. You know, that this thing you're making, it's not people, it's a wee, it's a little part of someone else's, you know, life. It's not, no one's necessarily going to be like, you know, it's like a wee thing glimpsed out of the corner of the eye or whatever, you know, and um, it's not necessarily that people are going to spend hours pouring over it you know I, mean, I know that can happen but i wouldn't expect that yeah that's not I, your intention i like i like i like it when it's quick and easy i don't want to hang around i want to get on it i want to i like going to an art gallery and getting out of it <laughs> <laughs> get in and get out but i think the, the clothing this is great i love this piece so much um, oh, yeah running uh, I mean apropos of what you were just saying about you know the 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 going to see the Mona Lisa was about going to see the Mona Lisa not the Mona Lisa right it's it's the all the things that 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 uh pilgrimage engenders and all the the memories that you have around it and this is this is a piece where you had performers sprinting around the Tate um, yeah. which you don't, you don't see people running in museums very much or at all. And if you do, you probably think something's gone wrong. So. <laughs> I, I like that about this, but this was another one of those works that came about by this sort of, in a, in a way, like almost like a little sort of scientific experiment on paper that I was thinking. One thing I was thinking about was, um, that I was making all this, I'd been making paint. I'd, I went to art school. I'd, I was in a painting department doing painting and history of painting and doing still lives and, you know, model paintings and then uh, more paintings and models. And I got into kind of, but then I got into sculpture because I was thinking, well, paintings are, they're all kind of 3D things on the wall, you know. But eventually, after working a, a while, and I kept thinking, then, ah, oh, but like I'm working stuff out here, but in order to do all this work I'm doing, uh, you know, I basically have to move my body, you know, and what, and basically, so in order to make a work, what, even if it, whatever it is, even if it's a telephone call or a business, not necessarily, you know, an artwork, but to do anything, to do anything, what you have to do is move your body. That's what you have to do. So that's like the basic thing that people do when they're alive, you know. So I was thinking, oh yeah. So I was thinking, okay, I'll try and I'll work on people moving their bodies, not on like I'm not going to make paintings or I'm going to work on people moving their bodies. And and I thought, so what can these people do, you know, who are going to move their body? <laughs> and I thought, well, I'll just get them to move as fast as possible, make it really obvious, you know. And that was what, so then I get sprinters to sprint through the gallery. But it got, it got me thinking, you know, there's a thing, like when you're in an art gallery, you know, the people, it tends to be the case that the people are moving faster than the work, you know. And so this is a sort of reversal of that, you know. So mm -hmm. where the work is moving faster than the people, <laughs> and I, I feel like it often, you know, like talking about that thing, make it bigger or whatever, make it smaller, you know, turn it upside down, whatever, you know, put the trousers on your head, you know, just because um, do the opposite, you know, because I, cause I, cause I feel like the, the, that, that's the thing about the work. I feel like there's a thing, God, now you know what? I feel like I'm just blurting out nonsense. <laughs> Well, no, but I, I think it's like what you're, I mean, the, 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 
the process by which you arrive at a piece is so um it's you're just you're distilling 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 right there's this like kind of paring down of something to its um like a kind of essence and it's and we all can get that and then you just you know turn something around just the tiniest bit and that's sort of the the brilliance of it but i i also really love how you've mentioned school so many times or art school as this um lasting uh way this this kind of almost pedagogical way that you've kind of that you just have in you to continue to kind of um like think about making in those terms and in these really uh uh, that's really interesting to me. I'm not being necessarily articulate, but that that those lessons, that idea of ed, like school and and teaching, is really kind of part of your everyday thought. I feel like the thing about that is I, I feel like you know it's like if you're doing a painting or any kind of work, all you like. I, I mean, I think it comes from anxiety partly, but obviously mm -hmm. the you know because I think the real nature of everything. Is just like a mysterious magic, you know, and that is what's good, you know. But you can't make. How can you make that? You know, I don't know. I don't know where to start. But what I can do is, you know, I can measure, you know, I can measure things, and I can like, you know, I just stick to the stuff that I can, that I can sort of concentrate on, and the map bit. You know, if you're lucky. I feel like if, if something's good, then there's this magic in it, which is to do with, you know, other people and what they, you know, if they take it up, it's like, yeah, great, you know. Mm. Um, but I feel like you can't work with that, really. You can only work with the more concrete things, which might be these ideas, which I feel like relates to what you're saying about, like, the ideas on paper, the... the um, the num the kind of ge ge geometry or 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 or, or, or um, numbers measuring things you know I always think if you're not sure what to do you know do a bit of both <laughs> make for the same so they're exact so so there's no you're not choosing you know between the two you know. Make right. Up. Well, that's the thing that drives people crazy because then they're like, what is, you know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's why it's so good because people want you to choose the one or the other. That's much more comforting than the, than the both and because the both and just throws it all off. You're like, well, am I supposed to be happy or sad? And then <laughs> is it supposed to be on or off? You know, I think, and, and, and work, I mean, you know, people really like answers with art and, um, and, or not, not I mean, uh, often. I think a bit so, sorry, but the thing is, you know, because you can't have up without down. You know, basically, I I I think the trouble with choosing things to me is that is that it often is a you know it creates a artificial <clears throat> world that doesn't seem true to me. You know, you know, because hmm. um. Life's got everything in it, you know. So you know, you know and and um, uh, although you know, I like it. I mean, in general, I I, I mean, I like it. If, if, if I like you know to to skate a bit, and you know, I mean, I know I I've definitely made some things that probably wouldn't be called escapism exactly because like the sick film and you know, <laughs> definitely <things>. not. <laughs> but. Um, but I feel like that's also, due, you know, that's also because, you know, you can't just, you know, a song can't just have a chorus all the time, you know. Uh, although I know some songs do. <laughs> Well, but the I the um oh good the sick film I this this one if I recall because you and I did a show in 2013 at the Aldrich Museum and it was the whole thing was was looking at everything you made through the lens of of music and this one didn't come to my mind immediately as one to include 
but you really wanted to show it. And I, if, I, if I remember correctly, it's one of your, your favorite pieces that you've made. And am I, am I right? Yeah, well, I think, yeah. I think it used to be, um, it probably might still be, I, I certainly feel it's very, uh, I mean, it's like a film, I mean, I think of it now differently maybe from when I made it, but I, I mean, it's like a film of people in pain, you know. Then they, then they vomit and then they feel better, you know. <laughs> um, I just, when I was making that, I was just thinking all the time that, you know, it's like, it came, actually, this work came from talking about work. And uh, I kept thinking that working was like vomiting. It's like getting the stuff out to, you know, hopefully make you feel better. Mm. And uh, I kept thinking about that. And then I, I was thinking, well, why, so why don't I make a work, you know, that is... Uh, actually consists of being sick, you know. So that's what I tried to do. Um, but I don't know, but I, thought, also, I find it troubling, you know, as well. I mean, I think at the time I liked it. I think I, I, I liked it maybe when I was younger, I liked it more possibly because I, I was being naughty. <laughs> <laughs> a strong element of that. Yeah. You know, Often. Well, there's, there's a shock to it. I think there's certainly a, there's a starkness to the to the composition of it, which just you can't get away from the uh, the painting that they're making with their vomit or whatever, whatever, however you want to interpret it in that kind of clever way. But um, yeah, it's 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 gross and it's shocking. Um, but then when you talk about it, it feels so normal and sort of warm and fuzzy, which is kind of funny, you know. But yeah, you're sick and then you feel better. And that's great. <laughs> There's like a, it's weirdly optimistic when you put it that way. Um, well, I feel like it's important to try and do what you're not supposed to do a lot, unless it's harming someone else, you know. Well, I actually worried about that with this because the people doing it, you know, it was, you know, we spoke. Up, uh, it, was, it was difficult. It was like you know, because it was difficult to make. Mm. Yeah, you know. I can only imagine. Yeah, but maybe it's a good segue back to the piece at the parish um, as just a way to wrap up and then let people ask some questions. Um, because this is kind of somehow related to that, I guess. You know, this this kind of desire to feel better. And um, we've all just gone through a kind of rough time, to put it mildly. And this has a lot of optimism in it, which is great. You know, that that's it's um it's a nice thing. And and, and interestingly, I didn't want to overlook this, but um in reading about the piece, it mentioned that this was originally shown. On, on a building that was a home for orphans yeah. uh, in the late 1800s. And then there was a typhoid epidemic. Yeah. And the children had to be moved. And it, somehow the kind of, you know, that, that relationship between these two, luckily that was an epidemic and not a pandemic, but that this somehow came out of a similar kind of moment or yeah. thinking about a similar kind of moment. Yeah, that's right. It was an orphan. It was an orphanage. Um, the the building that uh, I first made it for. But I just think that you know, I think the reason I keep coming back to that is that it's just, I just it's like yeah, I just want to, I just want to feel okay. You know, I mean, yeah, <laughs> you know, and then I get it. That when someone says to you, I've experienced that with someone saying it, don't worry, you know, everything's going to be all right. It's comforting, you know. But um, I don't know anyway, but I don't know really anything about it. Well, um... Is there anything we didn't touch on that you want to bring up right now before I switch over to the questions? 
Not really. Only that I'd like to say that, you know, it's t- again, that talking about things, it's a bit dangerous because, I, I, like, for, you know, I would not want you to think that I think that I know what I'm talking about. No, that's really important because I don't fucking know what I'm talking about. I'm blurting things out. And I'm blurting things out as well. After many years of some of these things, you know, that, that and it's like you can start having ideas about it, thinking, mm. you know, I don't know. I always think it's almost, it's, it's dangerous to even look back and, you know, the idea that, my, you know, because I'm really happy that I've got a work of mine, in, you, you know, on the wall of your museum. But if I start thinking, oh, great, you know, I'm like, I'm a museum artist and I'm all thinking, you know, starting thinking that, you know, I feel like it's just, just really important to start again and just like from zero every time, you know. Mm. But even that, but it's different, you know. There's called it. There's this. Uh, there's an American. Uh, he's a blues guy. What's his name? I can't remember his name. But he he had a brilliant word for that, and he called it air pudding. <laughs> air, but and he called it, uh, the clapping. You know, air pudding. <laughs> it's really important, not. To taken in by the air of pudding, mm. you know, have a work in a museum and a and a, and a here there and that, you know. So anyway, but so. <laughs> Can I ask you one more question here? What's on? What's what's your hair? What's your head piece? The head wrap. What's what's going on there? Can we it's get a good look at what you're wearing because it's important? Yeah. Well, it comes across, but basically, it's a suit. And I've got the trousers on my ah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I'm working on it. Right. It's in process. This is an unfinished artwork. So the best thing ever for about three days. And uh, but this is the first time I've worn it. I'm looking for a I want to go to a garden party in New York. <laughs> Upstate New York. I feel like if I was at a garden party, you'd be able to understand what's happening here. Yeah, yeah. But like a weird hat. Yeah, it's like it's like turb. It's a turban. But now, now I now I've got you. I was I and you, are those your yeah? Are those shorts or your like undershorts? Yeah, no. I, I sought out the, what I thought were like the best kind of like baggy boxer short and these sock things. I love those. <laughs> Holding them up. Because um, I feel, you know, I think that trousers are one of the difficult problems in life. I mean, oh, I think, first of all, you have to be able to eat and live. Obviously, I'm talking about the problems of a luxury lifestyle. <laughs> the, you know, trousers are a real difficult problem. Because hmm. of what's going on there, you know. What is... Trousers have to do this impossible thing of like being able to hinge 360 degrees all directions. You know, they have to, you have to really sit down, stand up. You have to, it's an impossible piece of clothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I've been working, I've been just trying to design trousers. Uh, uh, so apart from this business. To wear on your, your legs, not your head. <laughs> to wear on my legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I like the on the head look, I might try it. I, I had considered really getting into like a turban this summer. So maybe yeah. I'll, yeah, maybe I'll start with pants. Tie that as a scarf, you know, you can tie it as a scarf. You see the legs can function as a scarf. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Uh, I like you know, in Britain. Mm. Um, well, I hope you get to go to the grocery store in that or to the to the bar or wherever. Um, I just, I wanna, uh, we have time for like one question. So I, I just wanna ask, I wanna, I wanna get to this a little bit. Um, Diane Eagles asks, or says, I'm a huge fan. I love your work and how it leaves a feeling of discomfort in the viewer, putting us in touch with anxiety and confusion, which is then relieved with laughter and humor 
an escape from the complete complexity and uncertainty. I feel you have your own school of philosophy. Also, how would you feel about having a blue plaque in Wakefield on the house you were born into? <laughs> well, there's a lot of things there to try and, but um, well, I'm happy that, uh, well, that's very nice of you to say those things. <laughs> and then, um, very nice. Um, a blue plaque, uh, yeah, I've seen those blue plaques. I don't know if you have them in the States, you know, like. We have red ones in New York. Well, in New York City, there's these beautiful red ones on, on buildings. Or whatever. Mm. They're blue here. Um, but, you know, I suppose that relates a bit to the air pudding that I was talking about. You know, and... Um, but, I, but I, I like it that, it, you know, it's brilliant to, like, I mean, wow. But, you know, it's brilliant to hear what I just heard you say that, that the person said. But it's also difficult to, yeah, I wish I was in a, in a line, and I wish we were in a room together and, you know, not yeah. kind of thing. I feel like it'd be difficult to give bullet point answers, you know, because then it's because, you know, that, that's the thing. I, th I feel like that's a good example because I feel like people want to say hello. You know, it's almost like, it's almost like what you're, it's like you just, people want to say hello and, and they want to be loved and everyone wants to be loved and, you know, I want to be loved. Mm. Every, you love them and that's what and, and so but almost you might do different things in order to because you want love or attention or you know and and the thing is to oh, I don't know what the fuck am I talking about you know what I'm talking about yeah. well it's a reason for it's a you're I think what you're saying is it's a it's a it's something that motivates whatever it is that they do and that you do so. um, but I, but I think what I'm trying to say is it doesn't really what it what it is, is in a way isn't that important you know like we've been talking about some of the details of the work that I've made but in a way those details aren't important you know primarily I'm just trying I'm just going around wanting to be loved yeah feeling anxious, like everyone else and feeling anxious you know I mean there might be some stuff in a museum but then you know that's like you know but you know let's see. Well, on that note, um, on your on your quest for being loved, when's, when's your next show? Your, do you have one to look forward to that we can tell people about? They can see a bunch of work in a room. There's a well, there's a there's a big, huge retrospective that they're working on in Sydney. Awesome. Which is going to tour, and they're actually looking for a they're looking for a American. United States, uh, they might tour around in the, in the East as well. And then um, I'm working on a show. Uh, when Just before the lockdown, I was working on a one-person show for the Edinburgh Festival, a live show. Nice. And that, um, that's uh, um, that. <laughs> Well, well, hopefully, that's, I, I think the end of the festival is, is only going to ha happen in a slight, it's not going to happen this year. I mean, it might happen a bit, but not really properly. Yeah. Maybe I'll get going with that. I was doing a tour just before lockdown as well of, of the States doing this with talking and songs and stuff. And this end of the festival. So anyway, there's this live show that I'm working on. Well, I hope I get a chance to see it, and I'm, I'm. It's so great that the big, the big survey retrospective, whatever they're calling it, is in the works. I think that'll be, it'll be brilliant to see that. I look forward to that. Good. Thanks for having my uh, for do, Well, it's not like mine. But thanks for doing my work. <laughs> <laughs> it's very much your work, and we're so pleased to have it. Um, I think it's well timed and and it's it uh, it's so appreciated. So thank you for being a part of the parish and for spending time with me today. It was so nice to see you. Thank you.
Okay, so we can sign off now. And um, thank you everybody for joining us. Have a great rest of your Friday and a, and a really nice holiday weekend. Bye, bye, thanks. Bye. Woo. <laughs>